Hi, good evening. My name is John Bless, and I'm what you'd call a train nut. So what you're going to be seeing here is a traditional 1930s era Lionel train. And, and the Lionel train was the most popular boys toy in the United States in the 1930s and 40s. The model railroad here is about 6 feet wide and 20 feet long and the main line doubles back on itself twice. In addition to the main line, there's three spurs, and railroad spurs are like like driveways almost. They go from the main line to a particular um, business, a factory, or a mine. In this case, there's a gold mine up in the hill here, and there's a little spur here. So I'm going to operate the little Southern Pacific switcher that's going to pull two cars from the mine here over to the main line. This model railroad is called the Oakland Pacific Railroad Company. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the main power here for the main transformer. Let's give this train a little juice and see what happens. Many model railroads display an idyllic American life. Everything is pretty, everything is perfect, a lot of picket fences, no graffiti, that type of thing. So I have a number of little elements that I'll talk about that are more authentic, more accurate to the real world, and show the imperfections of our society in hopefully a good-natured way. One of the challenges of California, the contaminated um, pools as part of a side effect of gold mining. The other thing we have in California is methamphetamine production, unfortunately, and it usually takes place in a semi-abandoned trailer, so it, no, no scene of, of the Sierra Nevada in California would be complete without a decrepit meth lab, and so I've got a nice gold-painted decrepit meth lab right there. We go to the middle of the state, which we call the Central Valley, and the Central Valley is one of the world's great ag areas. And so, to pay homage to that, I have a nice flat ag area. I have a number of crops that are important. Those are mostly row crops. In the middle here is rice. It's a flood irrigation um, area, and to, sh to show that, and the railroad was always a big part of agricultural production here. For those of you that have been to California recently, you'll recognize this is some production cannabis right here. And so I wanted to be topical as that's an exciting new crop for a uh, very high yield, exciting new crop for Californians. So one of the things that really brings a layout to life, and I really am just in the very beginning, is people. When you add people to a city, it becomes alive. And so I want to have of a crowd of people that's representative of any big city. I invested in recently was a kit. I wanted to have a basketball game. And so I got the kit of basketball and all the players were white and they had overalls and long button down shirts and and pants, and I didn't like that. I didn't think that was accurate. So I, I took all of the basketball players and I repainted them to have shorts, and I gave them a skin color that was kind of multi-ethnic or hard to, de to determine. They could be black, they could be white with a tan or Italian, they could be Latino, they could be Asian, kind of um, ethnically ambiguous, but more representative of the city. And so we'll have, um, city workers, we'll have um, shoppers, but we'll also have other types of people that are often left out of something like a model railroad that are part of our society. So um, or I'm going to have some criminals, I'm going to have some um, pimps, some prostitutes, sex workers, all kinds of things, and we'll have all of that kind of stuff to have to, to kind of demonstrate the richness of a society like Oakland. My background is I'm a civil engineer, so I like infrastructure, I like buildings, I like roads and bridges and tunnels, and so I wanted to have a layout that had all of those different items in it. Bay Area people love bridges and cutting it, cutting edge, artistic bridges, and so this is a, a, a funky um, cable stayed bridge. There's not one ever built in the world like this, but that just kind of gives you an example. 
Many model railroaders have a steel mill. Steel mills are very, very popular. There is some light steel production actually in Oakland and Berkeley. And so I scratch built, which means I designed it completely from scratch, looking at photographs, bought the materials and built it from just completely on its own. Uh, this is my latest building and this is the steel mill. And it's in that brown steel color and I, it, it's lit up on the inside in it and it squeezes between two tracks here. This building, for example, is a more t traditional scrap or kit bash where it was two rectangular buildings and then I cut them together and curved them to be in this funny lot. The last thing I wanted to capture was I was able to get a kit. This is mostly a kit. I didn't modify this much. This is a McDonald's restaurant. I took it off the stand and I, and I put it in the corner and painted the ground and that kind of stuff. So that gives you kind of an overview of the, of the Oakland Pacific Railroad. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is, am I finished with this? And, and, and I won't, this only about 25% done. And that's somewhat by design. I'm 52 years old and I've been working on it for 10 years and I'm a quarter of the way done. So I think about age 82, I should be finished. Um, and it, there, are, there are buildings, there's parts of this that I may decide, hey, I want to redo them. So it will be a, a, a three steps forward, two steps back type process.